Hi everyone, hope you're all well. In this video we're going to talk about useful AI websites that you can use whenever you're developing a website, studying, learning, or even if you just want to experiment with AI, see how you can use it in different situations and things like that. So what is AI? AI is essentially art stands for art artificial intelligence and it's the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, especially computer systems. Using artificial intelligence for something like web development, for example, doesn't just mean like coding assistance. They can also be used to help users interact with websites and brands in new and more efficient ways. So for example, in customer experience and support chatbots, um, I'll use AI to essentially delegate low level work to them to kind of free up more time for you to focus more on your business um, and your services and things like that. So one really popular AI tool that's been around for a while and is really accurate and again really popular is Grammarly. So Grammarly is a little tool that essentially detects grammar and spelling, punctuation, word choice and style mistakes as you write on um, just about any kind of email, word documents, web, social media or even on your own websites. Grammarly's AI system combines machine learning with a variety of natural language processing approaches. So human language has many levels at which it can be analyzed and processed from. Things like from characters, individual words, um, grammatical structures, sentences, even paragraphs of full text. Um, and Grammarly will use, uh, AI systems will essentially scan your text as you're writing it um, and point out any uh, grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, punctuations, and things like that. So it's really good to kind of point out use overuse of particular words, show sentences that are too long and wordy. Um, and in some, depending on what plan you're on, it can also identify weak adjectives and give you options for better ones as well. Um, so Grammarly uh, does have a free and a premium version. So Grammarly's free and premium version's main difference is that the premium version offers you significantly more re recommendations, um, vocabulary enhancements, writing style suggestions, and even some plagiarism checks. Um, but even if you don't have the premium version, Grammarly's free version will still analyze your text and still point out where your weaknesses are. Um, if you go on their website, you can sort of see the uh, all of the different platforms that you can use Grammarly on, Grammarly on um, whether that's Gmail, uh, Outlook, Slack, documents and projects like Notion and Google Doc, and even on your social media. Um, Grammarly is really flexible on any kind of platform, really. Um, Grammarly Premium, a lot of people will say that it is worth it, um, especially if you purchase the annual plan, which should save you about 61% every year. Um, it's a really fantastic tool for writers, bloggers, marketers, students, academics, um, and things like that. But it's also really good for websites um, as it can scan the content on your website as well, the written content, and be able to point out flaw any flaws in that as well, as if there's any grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes on your website content, it can put off users, it's kind of bad for user experience, um, and it will get picked up by Google as well. So definitely it's a tool worth having. Um, Go Grammarly um, works as like a Chrome extension or any kind of browser extension where you can just have it in your browser and it'll scan all of the pages basically that you're on and be able to give you any uh, checks and uh, recommendations for changes as well. Um, so their kind of AI is good for like work, education and things like that. If you go on their website and click into compare plans, you can sort of see what you're getting. Um, so with the free uh, with the free plan, you can get uh, basic grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, punctuation fixed. Um, and then with the premium plan, you've got everything in the free, but then it will also rewrite certain sentences if they're maybe too long or if there's a better way to kind of phrase a sentence that you've written, um, give you lots of word choices, can also make the help you write the a sentence or a paragraph in a different tone so you get the right impression on your reader and you can also proofread and citate um, whenever that's necessary so if you're a uni student this can be really useful as well um, you can scroll down and see more of the suggestions or more of the features basically based on for example security writing suggestions team features things like that um, and then business plans is more for teams and it includes everything in, in premium um, but then you have a bit more of like a style guide as well. Um, so you can create a company style guide to help different team members write consistently and on the focus of your brand um, and things like that. If you see a compile list, you can sort of see all of the a list of everything that you're getting. Um, but you do have sort of the option for free version. And even with the free version, you're getting a lot out of it as well. So even if you want to create an account with the free version and just see how it works and whether or not if you decide you need the, the pre one of the premium ones, um, you can always upgrade at any time. So Grammarly is one sort of AI application that's 
really useful to uh, do your work essentially and make sure it's as uh, high quality and as professional as possible. Another AI based tool that's really popular and can be extremely useful is Wolfram Alpha and it's known for its ability essentially to solve very complex equations in maths and physics but it's also capable of a lot more. So for example, students can compare different elements to in the periodic table, they can explore computations for engineering problems, discover information about living organisms. It's a really good kind of study tool. Um, but un And you can essentially, what you need to know is go onto the website and then search for whatever it is that you need to know. If it's um, something that you want to calculate or something that you want information on, or you can also input some math equations as well. Um, so it's a little bit like Google search in that you are essentially searching for answers um, by using a little uh, search icon here and then uh, going through all the answers. However, unlike Google search, the goal of a search on Wolfram Alpha is not a list of links in which users can find answers to their requests, but it's a compilation of facts and specific results um, as well. The search engine Wolfram Alpha has been, a um, has been able to handle specific questions since its launch and it's more of it uses more sort of Symantec search um, as well. Um, so the way it works is you can just es essentially enter what you want to know about. For example, if you wanted to know the nutritional value of fat-free milk, you can just type that in um, and then you'll be essentially, you'll get your answers based on, for example, an input interpretation, average daily value. You'll essentially see information about everything that they know um, about your query that you that you've put in it can be used for calculations so simple and even complex calculations as you can see here um, can be carried out with Wolfram Alpha the search engine essentially cal calculates matrices it's capable in algebra um, trig trigonometry is also like number theories as well um, Wolfram Alpha can also handle chemical formulations as well as physical calculations and the search engine solves finances and related uh, relating um, computer operations as well um, it's a really kind of useful tool, um, especially uh, for students if you ever need information um, and things like that. Another cool thing that Wolfram Alpha can do is comparisons. So the search engine offers the option to compare different aspects, different persons, different countries or issues. Um, so for example, if we do, um, and it can be on anything. So if you do two different cities, for example, um, It will then go in and essentially give you a comparison like chart and it'll show you what it's essentially um, using whenever you are typing in those uh, queries for example it's assuming london is the city it's assuming paris is the city and it's assuming it's these two uh, cities here but you can also change them so for example um, we've just written kind of ambiguously london but there's london united kingdom and there's also london in canada then there's also paris but paris um there's paris france and also in texas as well um but you can see once it's decided on what semantics to use it will then give you their interpretation and it will essentially give you a comparison list um it'll show you like the, the location it'll show you distance it'll show you flight times it'll give you a full essentially all the information it has on both of these two things and we'll put them in sort of like a comparison chart as well um so it's very intuitive um it's pretty kind of cool to use as well and you can do it on anything so um as a fun one even for example say fictional characters and you can put that in you can see it does a character uh comparison as well it'll show you all the assumptions that it makes and then it'll give you all the comparisons as well so it does it on quite a lot of things it's got a huge database of like knowledge essentially and a huge knowledge base um, that it'll use to kind of essentially give you information on everything that you've you've typed in basically. In terms of some benefits for SEO, Wolfram Alpha isn't a conventional search engine since it's primarily intended to provide knowledge. It will therefore hardly have any kind of importance for e-commerce or any kind of brochure website as well and consequently it's just um, not a majority for the search engine optimizer optimizers since the search results of wolfram alpha doesn't have any links pointing to a specific website this kind of search engine won't serve as like a traffic supplier instead it shows the particular way in which semantic searches can be interpreted and how powerful a search can be currently um but interestingly google does index also indexes search queries from wolfram, wolfram alpha the extent to which is this is intended to increase its own knowledge base is unsure. 
um, but essentially, but they do have some links together anyway. So yeah, it's a really, this one's a really interesting website um, for learning, for comparisons, and even just to see how powerful AI can be and how knowledgeable you can have AI to be as well. So the next AI application is a little bit of a fun one. So this is Thing Translator. Um, this website is from Google and um, it's essentially a translator website, but using images. So let's say that you're abroad and there's a language barrier and you want to translate something like a drink or a sign or something like that. So you take a picture of that drink and then you can translate it into that language. So Thing Translator works on your phone and it comes in lots of lang popular languages. Um, it's just one example of what you can make using Google machines learning, machine learning APIs without needing to dive into the details of machine learning. Um, but it's really cool. You just need to go into Thing Translator website um, and then just click on launch experiment and you essentially can start taking pictures of things to translate essentially. Thing Translator is open source and it's also an offline application and it uses the modern machine learning techniques. Um, so it uses computer vision and natural language translation. It's a web app that lets you essentially point your phone at a particular object to hear it in different languages. The task of the translator here is to maintain this kind of balance between the source language and the language of translation. Um, it was developed by Google as part of an AI experiment, but it's very kind of fun to use and another way to kind of see what you can do with AI as well. The main reason behind building this application is to help everyone know different things in many different languages so you can understand the wor word a little bit, world a little bit better. It can be used for the classification of household objects, um, like bottles, clocks, face masks, things like that, and also some electronic objects as well. Um, some different flowers, animals, and things like that. Another experiment AI tool from Google as well is Talk to Books. So with Talk to Books, you essentially type in a query sentence or statement in the search box here, and then it will help you discover sort of different perspectives and books that you may want to read. There's also samples and you can click on them as well. These samples look at over 100,000 books to find responses that would likely come next in the conversation. Um, this experiment by Google is to teach its AI how real humans have a conversation and how it kind of flows. Um, so you see at the bottom here you have some, some samples here. Um, this one here and you can see uh, once you type in the search it'll show you different passages from books. Um, and then it'll show you some uh, more passages as well and some previews as well. And then from that, you can sort of click in view in book and then be linked off to maybe a new book that you want to try as well. So it's a really fun way to kind of explore ideas and discover new books. Um, especially if you consider the old way when you discover new books, essentially people will tell you about a book, so a news source will tell you about a book, family members tell you about a book, but now you can actually add convention conversational AI as, an, as a way of discovering a new book. Um, while it's still in its early, early stages, this development can sort of affect all other forms of media. Um, a lot of individuals and organizations thrive on selling books, while other make, uh, thrives on making other types of content, content like podcasts or videos, in order to cultivate uh, audiences that can receive marketing to buy those different books. If an AI is telling users to what books they need to buy next, then that same AI needs to know where to find other content from either that author, that publisher, or similar authors and publishers, things like that. So in other words, you have to now make sure that your media are available through Google Play Music, your audiobooks are available in, Go in Google's ecosystem, and your videos will be available and searchable in YouTube as well if you aspire to sell more books. Um, and that's if sort of talk to books sort of becomes more popular and takes off. Um, the way AI currently is going, and that seems more and more likely. And what's also interesting to know about talk to books is that its underlying code is open source. So that means lots of applications can be built using this technology in different contexts, from larger publishers applying this to their own inventories of books to get various insights to members of the media that they're using, um, the technology to search for subject matter experts semanti uh, semantically and also schools can use this technology to expand or update curriculum um, and so on and so forth. So it'd be interesting to kind of see what gets built sort of on top of this as well. So those were just kind of three examples of really useful kind of AI websites and really kind of interesting AI websites. Some of them are still experiments and some of them are well-established kind of AI uh, tools that people use to kind of make their life a little bit easier. There's a lot, there's lots of others, um, AI websites and tools out there, especially specifically for 
um, web design, web building, students, things like that. Um, so it's really important that you kind of experiment with AI, see what you can do and see how you can use it to kind of improve your life and make your life a little bit easier, whether that's running your business, running your day to day um, and things like that.